All right, we're back at it one more time. Morning. I am Ardeon Butler. And it's your man, J.D. August. All right, and this is Wordplay. Word play. Absolutely, guys. Get excited. Uh, come on in. You know, make yourself at home. Get comfortable. I'll go ahead and share the broadcast. Um, as you know, as we always come through with a word just for you on this uh, Sunday. So uh, without further ado, J.D., you ready to get started, man? Yeah, you already know. Let's give him that 30-second countdown. Yeah, you guys are understand. Now. It's about to go down. Wow. Here we go. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, JD. How you feeling, bro? Man, I'm feeling great, brother. It's uh, it's a beautiful Sunday, and uh, and it's been an amazing week. And we are happy to join with you all again. For those who uh, got my personal invite, thank you for joining. Thank you for liking the page. You are definitely in for a treat, uh, Mr. Butler. How are you today? Uh, I'm saying I'm 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 okay. I will say that I'm okay. Doing better than most. Um, but definitely, um, again, just, I'm, I'm happy to, to be able to be before you guys once again, uh, you tune in. This is, uh, need a word as we come before you every week with content. You can catch us on Wednesday for our word of the day Wednesday. Um, also you may catch some inspirational videos that we may drop. So we're trying to give you content every week. Um, but on so today, Sunday especially, is our special day. We come before you and we come with our brand new um, content, which is wordplay. So, uh, Jay, go ahead and tell the people what can they expect uh, for those of them who are tuning in right now. Hey, listen, when it comes to wordplay, you can expect the unexpected. And that's definitely for sure. Here's what we're going to do. Um, with wordplay, we've got a random word generator that is going to provide us with some words. Now, with the click of a button, we are going to receive a word that we have never seen. And you'll see it the same time that we do. And as soon as that word comes up, my brother and I, R. Dion Butler, are going to look to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to give us some kind of inspiration with that word to share with you. Because we believe that you need a word. We all need a word to sustain us in this season of life. And no matter what you went through this week, I can guarantee you that the spirit has something to say to you. So, again, no preparation, no notes. It's just right off the top. We're going to do three rounds of that. And uh, and the fourth round is going to be our bonus round. We're going to need your help for that one. So in the chat box, you'll see a lot of comments coming through. But in that fourth round, feel free to join us. Why don't you throw us a word? If you're saying, hey, these words that are coming a little easy or or maybe they're not. But why don't you throw us a word and we're going to select one word and we're going to use that for our fourth bonus round. Now, what you'll notice that at the end of this, the spirit speaks in a very clear message. So we hope that um, you'll uh, participate through the entire broadcast. Share it with someone that you know that might need a word, someone you know that might need a smile, might need some encouragement today, because this is exactly what they might need. So, again, that's wordplay. We're ready to get started. All right. Appreciate that, J.D. So, as always, um, we come before you. We have our word generator getting ready to bring to the screen here. Boom. Just like that. And so as you guys that's been following us, this is our seventh episode. So I'm pretty sure you by now, you guys should be used to what's happening during this hour is uh, we're going to go ahead and click on the random word generator. It's going to give us a word and then we're going to and then breathe life into that word and give it right back to you. OK, so I'm super excited and um, I'm ready, man. So let's go ahead and get started, man. Let's don't let the people wait any longer. I know they came to see. Uh, what the word of the Lord is for them on today. So here we go. We're kicking it off, man, with blimp. You know, we got blimp, man. So, you know, it was always a back and forth on that first word just yeah. to kind of see, you know, 
Uh, are you going to take it to another level? Are you going to, you know, what are we going to do with Blimp? You want me to go ahead and take Blimp? Are you going to take Blimp? You know, is every day is a toss up. Every, every day is a toss up. <laughs> well, you always <laughs> leave it up to me. I think I'm going to change it up. I'm going to let you decide. All right, you're going to let me decide, man. I appreciate it. So my decision is I'm going to let you go ahead and kick us off. Today. <laughs> Blimp, you know what I mean? Thank you. Um, All right. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, man. Sky's the limit, bro. So I already hey, started hey, right there. You know what I mean? Hey, thank you for the launch. I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, definitely. So now we are looking at the word blimp. Um, I remember seeing blimps uh, many years ago. I don't see them in the sky as much. Uh, but if you've ever seen a blimp, it's a huge um, air vehicle. I guess is the best way that I could describe it. And it has a little cart at the bottom or a place where the people who are driving the plimp are. I remember seeing it in old Batman movies. Um, but in real life, the only blimps I've really seen are the Goodyear blimp, right? Mm -hmm. um, man, Goodyear blimp. Now, the moment I say Goodyear, some of you want to log off. Don't do that yet. Because before we judge this year prematurely, um, I want us to think about this word blimp and the word good year. That's what initially comes to mind. You know, some of the best things in our life comes from some of the toughest moments, some of the challenging moments of our lives, things that we've had to really work for and work through. It's hard to associate this year as a good year in talking about the word blimp when some of us have even lost loved ones um, or have had to be separate from loved ones. A lot of you have had to change your routine, have lost income and things of that nature. So how can we still say it's a good year? See, the blimp is filled with hot air. So um, is it that? Is it that we think that the hot air um, is, uh, is really, when you say good year, it's not really a good year. It's just all hot air. Um, but I would have a word of encouragement for you just to start off. When I first think blimp, I think good year. And every year that you are above ground, I, I want you to understand that it is a good year, that you have the ability to wake up, to move your members. As my brother said, he says, I'm OK, but at the end of the day, I'm doing better than most. Right. And if you take a real evaluation of this year and how it has gone, yeah, you may have lost some things. Yeah, you may have changed some things, but some of those things have caused you to either become better or cause you to walk into something that you have not wanted to do. New opportunities have opened up. Uh, so I wanted to start off with Goodyear. When I think of the word blimp, I think of Goodyear, and I think of this year and every year above ground and with the Lord. Wow, um, that's that's what I'm talking about, man. That's how you kick it off, man. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's funny you say that. Uh, with the whole good year, right? I mean, again, great, great tie in good year blimps. What we think about, especially, you know, back in the day watching the NFL, you know, that would be one of the things you'll see the good year mm. blimp, you know, kind of fly over the stadiums. But just to kind of um, bring it back home, um, 2020, you know, when we really look at it, um, we don't want to say 2020 and good year are all in the same sentence, right? Uh, seems to be uh, a contradiction. Mm -hmm. um, in that, because um, for many, um, 2020 has not been a good year. It's been a lot of change, a lot of transition, a lot of things that were lost um, in the year 2020. Um, but I, I want to speak to uh, perspective, perspective, um, mm -hmm. because when I think of the blimp, Unlike the airplane, where you realize the airplane that's flying in the sky is going about 500, 600 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So the objective of the plane is to speed by and to get to his destination as quick, um, as fast as possible. Whereas the blimp, the blimp is not predicated on the speed. The the, the blimp is there almost like hovering over um, mm -hmm. and it allows you those individuals who are inside of the blimp to get a perspective of the ground below. Mm -hmm. it, it, it gives them a perspective based off of their view and what they're looking at during the time. So as the blimp is hovering over, it gives them an opportunity to kind of to change their perspective. It's not about speed. It's not about getting through 
uh, the year, but it's about what can we take in from this good year? Um, yeah. What is it that we, as we're coming towards the end of the year, what are some things that we could remember uh, that has happened that has changed our perspective? Yeah. A lot of you guys may be in a place to where your perspective has changed on um, our leadership. Your perspective might have changed on our uh, government, our legal system, our police force, our our uh, health care. Uh, based off of the things that you've seen, your perspective might have changed. But I think the blimp gives us an opportunity to evaluate um, the plane and the things that we're hovering over. And as you stated before, um, there's been a lot of a lot of casualties this year. And, and you didn't know this um, in the beginning, but um, when you speak of losses, uh, I've suffered, you know, my family and I have suffered quite a few losses um, this year. And most recent, um, the loss of my grandfather this morning. And um, as I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you guys right now, you know, I have my perspective is, is a little different. Um, I um, my perspective on life and death is a little different. And that's because of my relationship with God. And I understand um, that he's in a better place to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so I understand uh, that. But even in the aspect of thinking about the blimp and how it just kind of hovers slowly over, I'm able to be reminded of um, memories, you know, and, and being able to, to look at things uh, differently um, as we're going through this process. And, and so that's the first, that's what comes to mind, man. We are speaking about the blimp in a good year. I mean, there's a lot of things. It's just about perspective um, because what's good, right? That's a relative term because what's yeah. good for you may not be good for me, right? So mm -hmm. there may be some people who say, man, this has been the best year of my life. Um, I, I know for one, um, my wife and I, we've had like the tail of two halves where the first part of the year, oh my God, it was not a good year. I'm telling you, it was a horrible year for us because we were going through a transition. But the latter part of this year um, has been the best year of our lives. Um, but it's just perspective. And I believe when God takes you to different heights, going back to the aspect of the blimp, you see things differently. Yeah. And he gives you perspective on a lot of different things. So that's what I want to take out of that is um, is perspective. You gain perspective and the blimp allows you to see things differently and uh, allows you to uh, be able to to see things in a different light. Definitely. Definitely. Um, a powerful addition there. Um, we, of course, uh, myself, my family and of course, the Facebook family, I'm pretty sure. Um, echo this, our condolences to you and your family. Um, and, uh, you know, what joy there is to um, have peace in the Lord, um, to know that, you know, your loved ones are in a good place and um, are in a better place than we are. And that does give us some peace. Um, so, again, um, our condolences and uh, as your family goes through that. And uh, as you talked about the perspective that is gained from a blimp, um, being able to see the ground. I, one of the key things that jumped out to me was the pace that mm. the blimp is going in, the speed yeah. that the blimp is going yeah. in. I think that was a very pivotal point that you brought up there because it allows for a two-way interaction um, okay. where you are able to see a perspective um, at a really good pace of what's going on on the ground and uh, your life, you may be feeling like you're hovering over certain things. And the fact that the year, the good year has been at a pace that is slower, it has allowed you to pick out some things mm -hmm. and see mm -hmm. some things that maybe you would not have seen had you been flying through this year like we have mm -hmm. done in previous years. Come on. So the pace has really been to your benefit. Um, at the same time, uh, what, if your per what is your perspective of a blimp when you are on the ground? Right. What is the purpose of a blimp if you are on the ground and you're looking up? Unlike a plane that goes by so quick, the blimp going by so slow allows you to see the message that is written on it. It immediately reminds me of a movie. 
Not the okay. most godly movie at all. Scarface. <laughs> and in Scarface, there is a blimp, I believe it was, that goes by really slowly. And on it, it says that the world is yours. The yeah. world is yours. Now, in the movie, Mr. Al Pacino does a great job um, as an actor, but Scarface is a complete mess, and he takes that message and goes the complete wrong direction. But maybe the, the fact that the year has almost felt like it has dragged on, mm -hmm. it hasn't gone mm -hmm. as fast as most years, yeah. has allowed you to stop for a moment and look up, but have you perceived what the message is? Yeah. What has this year been trying to tell you? Mm -hmm. I mean, could you literally go into 2022 having changed nothing, having learned nothing with a year like this? I would think that would be a huge miss for any one of us. So I would just implore anyone who is watching, even if you have ignored the messages up until this point, you still have time to receive that message, that which is coming from above. What is this year, what are the heavens trying to tell you? Meditate on it, pause on it, because it's going at a slower pace so that you can catch it, so that you can catch it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you ever had someone read you back some information? Maybe you're in customer service or sales and they tell you their address real quickly because they know it, so they're like, yeah, I live at, da, 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 da. And you're right, like, hold right. on, you slow it down for me so I can catch it. And it doesn't mean that you don't have the ability or that you were dumb, but that since they know the information and you don't, you're unfamiliar with the information, you might need it at a slower pace. And maybe that's what the Lord has done. You know, you, whether you have gone into the church or you are schooled in the Bible or not, I can promise you that this year has gone at a pace. And the Lord is speaking in very simple, in a very steady tone, so that you can understand what he wants to tell you. It's wow, a good man. year. Yeah. Come to me. Yeah. And guess what? With me, mm -hmm. the world is yours. Everything yeah. that you need is with me. Everything yeah. that you need is in me. Mm -hmm. and, um, and and I'm never too fast for you not to be able to see me because mm -hmm. I am all around you. So um, that's what I would say there about the pace and the message of the blimp. Man, that's so good, bro. So, so powerful. Um, and I look at, as you shared about the, the pace of the blimp and retrospects to the pace of an airplane, and the aspect of the blimp is, is meant for you to see. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the blimp is big in order for you to see it. We don't want you to miss it. So the mm -hmm. message that is being conveyed to you is big because we want you to see it. God is saying, as you look up and you be able to, to see what I am saying, well, I'm doing it in a pace to where you can't help but see it. The shape of the blimp. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's in a way to where you cannot help but see it. Yeah. And the only way you miss it is if you don't look up. And so um, this is a, a word for, for, for me, for you, for every one of you guys that are watching. To look up. God is speaking. He's, he's sharing with us of uh, some things um, in, in this year. The things that he's revealing to you, but I think it's about pace and about getting us to slow down, right? Because with the aspect of the blimp, it allows us to be able to see it in a full glory, in the full aspect of the, the blimp because of the pace. So I think 2020 is showing us is he 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 got us to slow down, is what I'm gonna say. Yeah. I got us to slow down. Maybe we were just going to so fast, trying to get through every year. Um, trying to amass things, materialistic things. And, and I think this year has slowed us down. Remember what happened with the pandemic? What happened? They shut everything down, right? Yeah. So the yeah. whole hustle and bustle was slowed down. Things were at a, at a halt. Things were at a slow spe uh, speed. And I believe God um, uh, supernaturally uh, allowed this year to happen the way that it did to get us to slow down and for us to change our perspective and what's really important. And for us to understand that the messages that God is saying to us is if we look up, we able to see what it is that he is saying. We can see the writing on the wall mm -hmm. and it changes our perspective of, of, of our lives. So, so yeah, just to kind of button up, blimp right there. I think it's just a matter of God slowing things down for us so that we can see the message that he has written out for us. 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm reminded of a scripture um, as we close that out that says that the uh, race is not for the swift, but yeah. to those yeah. who will endure. Um, so, um, you know, being quick, being swift, uh, that's that's not the purpose of the race, but this is for one who will endure. And um, we've had to endure and we will continue to endure as we go into next year. So um, don't be so focused on getting somewhere fast, uh, cutting corners, uh, shortcuts, but to 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 um, make sure that you will endure and have the person on the side with you that will endure. Um, and um, and yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. I've got another one, but I, I feel like the spirit's going to keep moving on. So. Yeah, man, that's good, man. Um, that's blunt, bro. That's one down, man. So I think, um, again, man, the, the spirit is, is talking, man. And so um, we're just going to continue to ride this thing out, man. So let's go ahead and bring up our next word. All right. All right. Let's see what we got, man. What we got. Hmm. Or. Uh, or. 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 Ah. Or. 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 <laughs> and guess what? What's that? <laughs> it's on you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, I, I have no problem with it. I can take the oar. I, I can roll. I can roll with it. You know, you can roll I, with it. You know what I mean? See what I did there? I see. You ready? Yeah, man. Get ready. I get ready. I can roll with it. Uh, again, or or I look at the or, and as you all know, for those of you guys that are watching, um, the or is basically, um, I would say, an aid. Could I use that word aid there um, in Definitely. guiding uh, um, a boat? Mm -hmm. um, the or, uh, again, as is, is, is I look at it, is I guess could we equate that to also a, a paddle or, or something that allows the person that's inside of the boat to to steer? Um, mm -hmm. Whether you have an oar on a, on a big boat or you have several oars there on a, a boat, but essentially is there to um guide mm -hmm. is there to guide to um be able to steer uh the boat in a certain direction yeah and so i'm also reminded too of a um passage of scripture if you remember when um they were shipwrecked um, I believe it was it was Paul there and being able to grab, you know, uh, various things to kind of help get them to to shore uh, there. But uh, the or is basically a, a guide to aid in um, your uh, where you're going. Mm -hmm. And so if I can kind of pick up with that thought of understanding is that it helps in guiding you as far as in a direction that you're going in. You're able to maneuver through some things based off of the assistance of the or. Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I ask, so what is the or? What is that thing that you have to help guide you, to help assist you uh, when you're going through, you think of um, a canoe, you're going down, let's mm -hmm. say some some things in the water of life. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? The or is there to help guide you and direct you, allow you to also maneuver through some things um, that may be in your on your way. Um, and so, again, just on the simplest form, I can take to or to mean um, that could be the, the Bible. Right. That could, that's that's that is your guide to help you maneuver through this thing called life. And as we learn um, in this 2020, in this good year, uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of maneuvering that has to happen. Right. And so that's the word that I'm going to kind of pull out of that is the ability to maneuver. Um, mm -hmm. Having something there that allows you to be able to maneuver through some treacherous times in your life. What is your or? What is your aid? What do you go to? What do you turn to? Mm -hmm. Whatever you're trying to maneuver through and, and you're trying to to get to a particular destination or you're trying to go in a particular direction. Mm -hmm. um, what is that or that you're using to help guide you through? Um, I yeah. remind you of the, the scripture, the, the Holy Spirit He is our guide. Right. Um, he is the one that helps us maneuver through this thing called life. And I will equate uh, that to our or. So as we're maneuvering through life, as we're maneuvering through this treacherous terrain, um, what is that or that you're using? Right. What is that uh, assistant? What is that aid that you go to to help you steer and maneuver through? Yeah. So that's kind of my initial thoughts with or. 
That's good. Well, let's get into it. This is about the time we warm up and yeah, um, yeah. and and, um, and uh, just keep coming with the flow of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to roll with this flow as this river continues to flow. Let's dive in um, oh, because this word or. Wow. You know, the uh, Bible, I like the fact that you associated the or with the Bible. And the reason being is because they said that the Bible is like a two edged sword. Right. Able to cut through bone and marrow. Um, and, um, and the reason why is because it's able to help you to uh, look through a situation and look how to approach a situation. And at the same right. time, it's also helping you to correct yourself in the situation. It's never a one-sided thing. Well, if you think about a paddle or an oar, it is also not a one-sided thing. You could flip it on this side and row. You can flip it to the other side in row. So it has two sides, just like the the Bible um, having two sides being flexible to help you in any direction, whether you're looking at the situation or looking at yourself in the situation. So even before I go to the next point there, um, look, look at the situations that you have a different perspective on or you have a negative perspective on throughout this year as you have been in the blimp going slowly over the situation, meditating on it, maybe even building resentment in your heart over this situation. Have you been humble enough to look at your part in the situation? Okay. Um, there, I remember this one saying that uh, no, no matter how flat it is, no, uh, every pancake has two sides. No matter how flat it is, every pancake has two sides. And you cannot grow with wisdom. You cannot change things for the next year, that's, remember that's why the blip is going slower, to improve your life if you do not look at you in a scenario, if it's always someone else's fault, if it's mm -hmm. always the job's fault, if it's always your spouse's fault, um, your children's fault, your parents' fault, your past fault, I mean, we could keep going on, et cetera, and et cetera, and you are never in that sentence, mm -hmm then I promise you, you're probably missing some of the sentence. Mm. Um, so remember, the Bible is a great source to help you to go through these deep waters of life because some of the decisions that we have made have caused us to be here. Uh, some mm. of the interactions and the way that you have approached certain situations have caused the tension in that situation and that relationship that you have a part to mend. So, so think about it that way. It's double-sided double-sided. But what mm -hmm. I also love about the double-sidedness of the oar, if it is one person in the canoe, Rashawn, right? Yeah. You will notice that they have to row on one side and then row on the other side just to keep straight. Because mm -hmm. if you keep rowing on one side, you're going to end up turning. Yeah. If you row on the other side, you're going to end up turning. If it is two people, there's one, they're rowing on one side, the other person's rowing on the other side, and the and, and, and flip-flop. And it all speaks about balance. It speaks about the balance of the Bible, the balance of having law or um, things to look to, uh, standards that you can walk through and live your life through. And as a, at the same time, the, the, the grace that the Bible and that the Lord provides us to be able to get certain things wrong, but then still fix them. To me, it also speaks about uh, how the Lord and the word surrounds us, right? How he is on the right side of us, on the east side. There's no situation where he will not be applied. There's no water where you cannot dig that water, uh, that ore into and then not apply to that situation. So stop just thinking that the ore is only good for the right side of your life, right? That yeah, the Lord on. is only good for when you need money or, or, or when you need a relationship or when it comes yeah. to deal with your insecurities, or it deals with anything else, you kind of leave him out of that. He can go into all waters, and especially when you're in deep waters, which is the purpose of the oar. You don't do it if you're just in a shallow pool. You need an oar when you're in deep waters yeah, um, yeah. that you, you apply it to all sides of the boat because he is there. Um, man, that's good, bro. And let me just continue to add it with that. So the thing about the oar, as you make mention about um, he's not just good on the right side or the left side, talk about balance. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, you will see um, where there's more than one person in the boat. Mm -hmm. But the thing about that person who's in the boat with you, guess what? They have to be in sync with the direction in which you are going as well. There you go. Meaning they can't be rowing um, in one direction and you are in the opposite direction. Um, yeah. It, has to, it deals with a synchronicity in both 
arms are moving in the same direction. So even in this in this place that you may be in, you're talking you in the water, you in the river of, of life, you may have a companion in your boat. So I'm going to speak to rowing in sync. You, you have to have balance. How can two walk lest they agree? And I look at it from the aspect of rowing in the same direction. Like, who do you have in your boat? If you feel like you're not moving, if you feel like you're not headed in the right direction, check to see if that person who you have with you, that person you brought along with you on this journey is going in your same direction. Because if they're going in opposite direction, you're going to realize you're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. There's an imbalance that is there, which also, if you're not careful, can do what? Tip over. Yeah. There's an imbalance there and there's um, uh, you, you're you're going against one another. There's an opportunity to flip over. And now both you guys are in deep water. Yeah, um, so that's something I want to speak to. You want to always make sure that when you are rowing and you are going in the direction, you have that partner with you. You have a group of people who are going in the same direction that you guys are in sync. You are mm. rowing together. You don't want to go against each other or go against the current, you want to all move towards it. You're able to navigate better when you're all on one accord and you yeah. all are going and moving in the same direction. So I wanted to kind of highlight that too. And when you think of um, being in that boat and being in that ship or whatever the vessel is, that who's ever there with you along with the journey is that you guys are all moving in the same um, direction, in the same movement. Yeah. So yeah. my question is, who, who's in your boat? You know, <laughs> <laughs> who is in the boat? Yeah, hopefully, the boat here, hopefully it's not Leonardo DiCaprio, because that means you might be in the wrong boat. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> all jokes aside, you know, how can two walk together lest they agree? I love that because yeah. agreement denotes that there is some sort of communication going on. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that we have to speak when we talk about syn synergy and synchrony um, and, and communication. You know, some of you, the year has been, um, you know, a little tough for you based off of the communication that you have had with those that are in your boat, uh, whether yeah. it be business partners, spouse, family members, children. These are all people that are in your boat. Um, so you must communicate because one thing that I know is that when there's a team of people inside of a boat, even as they're rowing, anytime you have seen that picture, there's that. Roll, yeah. Roll, yeah. Roll because they want their oar to hit the water at the exact same time so they can get the maximum impact for their effort. Yeah. But yeah. what I love, I, I instantly had this picture of okay. you ever seen when they had the canoe races and they yeah. have teams. There's yeah. always one person at the tip of the boat, right yeah. at the tip, yeah. and yeah. he yeah. is facing a different or she is facing a different direction than everyone else. See, everyone in the boat is facing this one direction straight forward. And this other person is facing another direction. Now, that person is not looking backwards. They're not mm. looking at their past. They're not looking at the competition necessarily to see who's what. What they are looking at is the synchrony of the boat. Mm. They are able to see everyone in the boat because everyone mm. in the boat is not able to see everyone else. They can't yeah. turn around yeah. and focus because they have to trust that mm. they are all on the same page. But because he this person is looking at the boat he is able to communicate right to the members of the boat so that they will continue to be in synchrony so yeah. what that means to me is that the lord jesus mm, mm. let him be at the head of your boat mm, and on. every person in the boat should be submitted to him mm. so that way whatever he communicates it's always going to be in line because lord the lord is not the author of confusion so he would never sit at the boat and say, you row here, you row there, you jump off the boat, you turn back, you keep right. going back, you get scared. Right. So anytime, and, and that's so important because guess what? That will help you to discern other voices that will try to get you out of sync. Mm -hmm. When the enemy tries to speak fear, when the enemy tries to speak discouragement or condem condemnation, you'll be able to identify it sooner because you'll be like, no, that's not what my partner's getting from the Lord, or that's not what my brother's getting from the Lord. We, we, we've been told to move forward, or we've been told to roll in faith and to keep going. So that means that there's something else trying to distract us. Because remember, the race is not for the swift, but yeah. for those who will endure. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's good, bro. Yeah. Um, that's good. Um, so yeah, man. So that's, that's or man. And, and as, I, as I continue to look at the word there, what 
keeps coming to mind is that even though it's it's O or O A R that I see on the screen, mm -hmm. I'm also reminded like how that can change um, just by adding um, uh, an additional letter, mm -hmm. adding the S. And when you have an S, you have sore, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or you have roar it's almost like when you add to what god has already provided you it mm -hmm. allows you to do so much more like god will give you the or but when you bring your faith when you bring the gift and you add that thing that extra element yeah now you go from an or to a sore now you go from being in the water to now being in the sky come yeah. on now you yeah. be able to soar based off of what you're bringing to it god provides you with the or he provides you with the tools necessary for you to navigate this mm. thing called life, but what are you going to do with it? <clears throat> what are you going to add to it? What? How, how are you going to get out of that situation what God has given you? Ah, that sounds that. like the uh, the parable of the talents. Mm. Mm. Okay. Remember the parable of the talents. The Lord gives you something. He He expects you to invest it, to work on it, to on. to do what you have to do to bring out the fruits of it. Um, I remember the story of Jesus walking past the fig tree in a season where it wasn't even supposed to be bringing fruit, but yeah. the Jesus, the Lord uh, cursed it uh, because every fig tree should bring forth fruit. And you can mm -hmm. tell a tree by its fruit. You are not here to be fruitless. Mm -hmm. And having a PS5, and I'm not, you know, we're not gonna go down on it because I know right now it's Christmas season and all we're thinking about this society is all the materialistic things that we can buy. And we show that for fruit. We have a society of young people who have been taught by the entertainment company uh it's by what you wear it's by what yeah. jewelry you have what car that you drive that shows your fruit but those fruits don't last the race is not for the swift but mm. for those that will endure all of those things will pass away so mm. so your fruits should also be everlasting the things that you pour into your children are a little bit more important you know so if if your children are decked out from head to feet but they got the personality of a uh, Demon, for lack, lack of better words, we got some work to do this year, right? Yeah, and you yeah. know what? So funny. Oh, man. You have had to deal with that personality at home a lot more now, right? Because oh, yeah. of virtual school, maybe you have been able to sit back and see the fruit of your labor. Mm, mm. And how do you like the way that your children respond and the way that they learn, the way that they are um, uh, conducting themselves before you send them out in public to represent yourself? Um, and represent your family. How do you like it? And if you don't like it, again, see yourself in the situation. Don't just blame the children because you teach a child in the way that they should go so that later they won't depart from it. So this is just a great opportunity not to be condemned, but to take some responsibility and to make those changes as the year has been paced before they have to go back out to school or anything else that you can look at. Um, you know, I, I just kind of think of that again, is that yeah. think about the fruits of your labor. The fruits of your labor and let's kind of get away from what the world would see as fruit uh which has just been putting us all in a bad direction um but right, let's right. let's think about the fruits of the spirit i love that man so uh two down bro two, two down, down man and so uh, we have one more word from our generator and then we're going to ask you our audience to go ahead and give us a word so my brother and i can be able to breathe life into the word that you have for us um, and so let's go ahead and, and knock this third word I'm out of the park, man. And so I'm ready, man. So here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Boom. Wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow. Yeah, man. Real. So, so, man, um, I'm just going to roll it over to you now, man, since I had the last one. So I'm going to let you get this one and kick All us right. off man, with this, man. I know you got some for us, man. What you got, man? Wheelbarrow. Man, when I think about a wheelbarrow, it's a it's a cart, right? It's a cart yeah. that mostly you probably see in the agriculture industry where they are um, using that to transport um, fruits and transport uh, livestock, transport uh, soil, whatever that they need to take to another place. See, before we had F-150 pickup trucks, they had mm -hmm. wheelbarrows. Um, mm -hmm. We still have wheelbarrows now. When uh, I remember doing some gardening and some community service at an old, comp uh, old company of mine, and we used the wheelbarrows. It has one wheel, and you kind of, you have to lift it up yourself. And we put things that we were unable to carry. They're too heavy for us to carry. So this is a 
a, a, a mechanism or a tool that's able to help you to transport something that is too heavy for you to carry, too heavy for you to carry. Um, and so I, I, I instantly think of what is too heavy for you to carry. Mm. If it's too heavy for you to carry, that means it's also too heavy, it's too heavy for you to hold it, right? Mm. You, you can't bring it anywhere, but if you have it, that means that you're holding on it. And there are some things that if we don't deal with them, they are going to weigh us down. There are some uh, situations, we've been talking about situations, maybe relationships, past situations, mistakes that you have made and that we have made, that if we carry them on our own shoulders, they, they will weigh us down. So you have to get it off you, but you can't just leave it around you, right? You're in a new season of your life. You're in a new job. You can't keep, keep that resentment just sitting right there. Um, and um, so you need to move it somewhere. But if it's too heavy for carry, then it's uh, or to hold is too heavy for you to carry. Mm -hmm. So it makes me think about the wheelbarrow being the um, op opportunity that we have in prayer, the opportunity that we have in prayer, it, because the in prayer, we are able to bring to the Lord things that we deem too heavy for us yeah. to carry. We can yeah. pray about the small things as well, but I think sometimes we neglect to bring him the things that are too heavy for us to carry because maybe somewhere along the line, we thought that it was too heavy for him to carry. Mm, mm. And I just want to dis expose the lie right now. You know, you will pray about, you know, your lights being cut off and the Lord send me, send me some money for that. You'll pray over your food and make sure that the Lord will bless it. You'll pray over some things because you feel confident in doing that. But there are some things that you know are in your heart. The, yeah. Some things are in your past. You can't even open your mouth to say that you can forgive that person. Mm. It's mm. too heavy for you to carry, mm. but you will not put it in the wheelbarrow. You won't put it in, in that opportunity that you have in prayer to transport something that's too heavy mm. for you to the mm. place where it needs to be. So that's where I'm gonna start with the uh, wheelbarrow, being able yeah. to transport something that's too heavy for you. And I believe that prayer is the best way of doing that. Um, if you feel heavy laden mm. and burdened by something today, put it in prayer. The, the, here's the here's the indication for you. When you get down in prayer and it's so tough for you to open your mouth and just to say it, right. that lets you know that there's a spiritual block there. There is something that doesn't want you to let it go. But that is not of God because God says, bring it all to me. Bring mm -hmm. it all to me. Take my yoke as my yoke is light and give me your heavy burdens. If you're heavy laden, give it to me. So he wants to free you of that. But you have to open your mouth because the thing about the the um, the uh, the the wheelbarrow is that mm -hmm. you are still holding it up with your two hands. So you have a part to play in this. OK, so so bring it into prayer and allow yourself to bring it before God. And if you open your mouth, he will do some marvelous things in your life. Wow. Wow, man. Um, man, man. What a way to kick off wheelbarrow. I, I love the aspect of um, what it's, its intended usage is for mm -hmm. you to um, not hold it. Right. Like you don't just pick up the wheelbarrow just because you're lifting it up so that you can move it. Yeah. Right. The purpose of the wheelbarrow is to allow you to lift up things that you wouldn't normally be able to, but mm -hmm. you are able to move it. Um, and I love that because I'm reminded also of um, my wife, Juanita. She definitely um, loves gardening. And I said I had a I had a green thumb, but it's now since turned gangrene. <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore <laughs> because of all the work that we did in our houses previously. But I remember um, her digging up the dirt um, when she was planting the flowers. And I remember, again, uh, borrowing my neighbor's wheelbarrow because it was too heavy for me to continue to lift up and to carry out. Uh, the wheelbarrow made it a lot easier for mm -hmm. me to be able to transport that thing that I was carrying, that thing that I was holding, that thing I was digging up mm -hmm. to a different place. So now we're still talking about destinations. We're still talking about direction, transitions, all these still things that yeah. we've been talking about with these three words. But I want to share something with you guys because you said something that reminded me of, um, of something I would like to share to the people out there when we talked about uh, holding on to something. Yeah. So I have uh, this bottle here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I want, I want to share something with you really quickly, because if I were to ask you, 
Uh, how much do you think this bottle weighs? I've drank uh, some water out of it, so it's not completely full, but it still um, is a bottle that I'm holding up. So if I were to say, could you hold this up for, eh, let's say, 60 seconds? Most of you guys would say, yeah, yeah, I can pretty much hold it up for 60 seconds. think um, so. But what if I say, OK, well, can you hold this up now for, uh, let's say, about mm, two hours? Some of you guys might still be able to like think a brother could probably still do it. It's going to be hard. Mm-hmm. But you're probably thinking I can still hold it up because it's not that heavy. Yeah. But then what if I were to say, um, could you hold this up for 24 hours? Mm. Mm, mm, probably not. Yeah, no. And so my question is, why not? Did the weight of what I was carrying get it changed? No. No, it did not change. Um, but I still will not be able to hold it up for 24 hours, right? Um, my arm will get tired, get heavy, it'll feel like it's lifeless that I can no longer hold it up anymore, even though it didn't change the weight of it, but because I was holding it up longer than I expected. Mm. And so if I were to say, how can I relieve myself of the pain that I'm feeling right now? Because I'm feeling the pain of me holding up this thing. I'm feeling the the, the my my muscle tightening. I'm feeling the 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 pressure of me holding up this thing that looks to be small, looks to be something that's light, but because I've held it now for a long period of time, mm-hmm. I'm starting to feel pain. I'm starting to feel discomfort. So if I were to ask, how can I relieve myself of this particular pain? The easiest thing for me to do is what? Put it put down. That down. Yeah. Put, put it down. And so you're right, man. Like I put it down. I'm I don't feel any discomfort or anything like that anymore. And and let me bring this all around. Will circle. Let me bring all back around. Okay. Is the thing that you may be holding up, the stresses, the worries of the world the financial situations that you're dealing with, Mm. the experience of loss. If you think about that thing for a minute, you could probably continue to live your life. You could probably continue to do things as normal. If you start thinking about that thing for, let's say, a couple hours, yeah, you could still be semi-productive, but you're going to notice it's going to start weighing on you. But if you start thinking about that thing, that loss, that stress, that worry, that care for 24 hours all day, mm-hmm. then there's a lack of productivity. You're going to mm-hmm. feel lifeless. It's going to feel like you cannot get anything accomplished. And so the very remedy that I just had by putting it down, it's the same thing I'm going to share with you. You have to put it down. You see, the purpose of the wheelbarrow was not for you to sit up there and hold up all that weight. Because remember, the the wheelbarrow is made for you to put things inside the Mm -hmm. rock, the dirt, the the baggage, the luggage, all those things, the hurt, the stress, the pain. All that is made for you to be inside of it because it can hold it. But it's not meant for you to sit up there and hold it. It's for you to transport it now to a different location. The wheelbarrow is made for you to transport something. You're still holding it. So you're not absolved from it. You're not forgotten what you've been through. You've not forgotten all the things that you had to endure because there's still a little weight there. Mm -hmm. But now you're able to then transport it somewhere else because what did Jesus say? He said, my burden is light. Mm -hmm. My yoke is easy. So it's it's like you're, you're, you're transporting your worries to God, but you have to get it to him. You have to go to where he's at. And then you're able to then dump all your cares on him because it's like the wheelbarrow. You're dumping it over, right? You're dumping, you're pouring it out, but you're putting it out on him. You're allowing him, you take his yoke now. You know, you take his burden now because it's light. It's something that you can bear. And so I want to encourage you guys that may be dealing with some things right now in Mm -hmm. the the case of the wheelbarrow. You've been giving that for you to be able to transport those things and be able to dump it out and put it at the feet of the father because he can take it. He can take it and, 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 and do something with it. He can take that dirt that you have and use that dirt in order to plant some things in your life. The same dirt that you move from one place to the other place, because as 
I remember with Juanita, I moved dirt from one place to another place, but that same dirt was helped in making something become alive, right? That the yeah. flower that we planted, it was that same dirt, that same thing that I dug up, I was able to use now and a, a flower came as a result of that speak thing. to the speak to the people bro speak to the people and you know what I, I love what you're saying there there's um there's an aspect that you're also saying that even those things don't be deceived even those things that seem very light that you feel like you can hold um if you continue to focus on them those will be heavy laden as well so it kind of goes back to the all or what we talked about god being and everything and able to handle yeah. everything yeah. on both yeah. sides so don't think that even so let's flip it for some of you maybe you bring him the deep things and the things that hurt you the most. But there's another side of you that you don't even come to God for your light bill or for your phone bill that's causing you some stress. And, mm -hmm. and those little things sometimes seem they're so manageable. But to my brother's point, you keep holding on to that. You keep focusing on to that. It can lay, weigh you down. So enough of those little rocks and that you're holding on to will, will weigh you down. Uh, you know, it's kind of like if you think if you take a wheelbarrow, and they say, what's heavier, a thousand pounds of feathers or a thousand pounds of rocks? And most kids will be like, the thousand pounds of rocks. It's still a thousand pounds, right. right? So it might look like they're just little feathers and little situations that seem like, but a thousand pounds is a thousand pounds. So, so I love that scenario because it helps us to understand that we can bring everything. But something really hit me. Um, we, we, between these three words, we, we talked about the blimp and the perspective and the focal point there of the blimp being the message that's on the blimp, the pace, and then of course the perspective that it's providing you. There's a focal point that that's from the blimp is your perception um, and your perspective. Uh, yeah. In the or, there's a focal point when we talked about the person at the head of the boat being the focal point um, and the or being the focal point to help you to maneuver, but at the same time being submissive to someone who is directing and making sure that you are in, uh, in synergy. And then the focal point of the wheelbarrow being the transportation, right? If you just hold it, it's not doing anything. If you just put stuff in it, it's not doing it. You've got to transport it and dump it off somewhere. Don't just leave it in there. Get to the get to the throne room and dump it off. So there's a focal point. And it makes me think about, again, what are we looking at? What have you been looking at? What is your focal point? And instantly I think about Elijah the prophet uh, when he was uh, surrounded uh, in the, the king's men's. It's a story in, um, I believe it's in Second Kings, um, mm -hmm. but he was surrounded and he had a servant with him and his servant was fearful. And yeah. because he saw all of these soldiers that were coming to, to, to battle with them, but Elisha was just cool, cool as a polar bear. And, um, and, and then if you read the scripture, it's such a cool story. But Elijah, Elijah prayed to God and he says, Lord, open his eyes. Now the man could see. So what is he talking about? He's talking about his spiritual eyes. Open his eyes so that he can see. Those that are with us are more than those that are with them. And here he is with his natural eyes seeing an army. You are seeing in your natural eyes a huge boulder, a huge mountain before you. But the Lord said, who will say in faith to this mountain, be removed and tossed into the sea? It shall be so. So when he when he saw this mountain of people that are coming at them, and Elijah made that prayer instantly. The eyes of the servant were open, his spiritual eyes, and he was able to see the Lord's armies all around them with chariots of fire. And he saw that what Elijah was seeing, that more that is with us are more than that's with the world. Um, so I want you to pray. We pray that for you, that in your situation where you feel like everyone's kind of bailed out on you, you don't have family to support you, and you're feeling like you have just been abandoned. You are right. alone. That is a lie of the enemy. And we pray that the Lord would open your spiritual eyes, that he would show you how he is with you and that those that are with you and that are around you in that situation um, are more than your challenges, are more than the mountains that you face. Um, so we, we speak to your focal point, what you're focusing on, what you're seeing in the situation, and then also for you to focus on yourself in the situation so that you can improve and be ready for another good year. Um, so we just want to speak that over your um, over your eyes and right. over your life that uh, that you'll see the support that you have, especially from the throne room of heaven. Wow, man. Oh, my gosh, bro. Um, and I want to just I want to add this to this, because while you were speaking, the Holy Spirit dropped this into my spirit. 
And you may mention we talked about the blimp. We talked mm -hmm. about the oar or the, the boat in which the oar um, is attached to. And now we're talking about the wheelbarrow and what the spirit just dropped. He said, think about you said, what are your focal point? All of these three elements that we just words, I should say, all deals with transportation. 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 You have transportation in the sky, transportation in the water, and mm. transportation on land. Come on now. <laughs> you have transportation in the air of the sky. You have transportation in the water. You have transportation on land. So what God is saying, no matter where you are, mm. where you're in the sky, whether you're in the water, whether you are on land, I am here to I'm help you. transport you to your Amen. destination. I'm Amen. here with you. I am it, like when he talked about uh, Elijah, you may mention of Elijah, but in the cave, when he was like, um, you know, in, in, it made an earthquake, but he wasn't <laughs> in the earthquake, right? The fire, he wasn't in the fire. Like he named all these different things that God wasn't in. Yeah. He was in a small, still voice, but it still speaks to God being there. Yeah. He's there in the sky. He's there in the water. He's there on the land and he's there to transport you to that destination like he's, mm -hmm. he's he's here no matter what you're going through i just want to encourage you guys out there regardless of what you're going through even if you feel like your head is up in the sky mm -hmm. even if you feel like you're drowning in debt mm -hmm. even if you feel like you don't have a solid ground to stand on mm -hmm. god is saying he is still there he is there and he's there to help you and to transport you to that place that he's called before you. He's yeah. there to transport you to that place, to that destination mm -hmm. that he's intended for you to be. Whether it's by, and I believe there's a, a song, you know, whether by by uh, uh, plane, whether it's by you no know, uh, river, regardless, is like he'll be there. For you, yeah. and I want just to end on that note with these three words that we've all shared. Again, these are random words. We had no idea that we were going to be talking about these three different words, and you see God in every single thing. Yeah, that we just spoke about. That's so I powerful. wanted to, yeah, man. Mm. That's powerful, man. That's powerful. And you know what's so funny? Like yesterday, and I don't know if it's happening today as well, but in Fort Lauderdale, it's the annual Air and Sea Show. My son went to it for his birthday. And, um, you know, it's just so funny, you know, that people go out and the people are on the land while the planes are in the air and the boats are on the sea. And, and those three things still working all in together. And I just say I just say just stand back and look at the, the deliverance of the Lord. You know, the way that he transported the people of Egypt from Egypt all the way to the promised land, took them through a sea. It doesn't matter what gets in your way. Just stand back and look at the deliverance of the Lord. Please be confident. No matter what's going on, I know this is the last part of the year. This might be the toughest for some of you because you're used to having at this part of the year. We, we're right around the corner from Thanksgiving, and some of you might be questioning, do I have something to be thankful for? I want to tell mm -hmm. you, sit back and look at the deliverance of the Lord. That be, yeah. Make sure that your focal point are what's on the important. If I were to tell you that you're going to have a new car by next week or you're going to be able to buy that big screen TV for your family members for Christmas, I would be lying. That is not the deliverance of the Lord. What is your focal point? What do you see as bearing fruit? Did your relationship with your kids improve? That could be a great fruit from this year. Mm. And not only that, just knowing that things are temporary and they will change. Um, but uh, just be encouraged. Some of you, you're, you're treading some 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 really tough terrain right now. And you have started to or the enemy has started to try to sow some seed of doubt. And guess what? God had a plan to put two random brothers and a random word generator on the Internet to tell you that's a lie. Listen, the Lord is going to see you through. You may as well just put it in the chat. The Lord is going to see Amen. me Amen. through. I don't care how heavy burden you are right now. The Lord is going to see you through. He's going to see you through. All right. So don't worry about it. Don't let your head be lifted too much in the clouds. Don't worry about drowning. He's not going to let you drown. Just bring it to the Lord. Bring it to the Lord and he's going to deliver you. And I promise you at the end of the year, you will say, thank God it was a good year no matter what i might have been down for a while but it was a good year because it doesn't matter how much times you get down and i'll just say this and i know we got to get to the bonus round but i feel the lord speaking that hey listen um there was a quote that uh i, I believe i heard it from uh, eric thomas before he says if you fall down if you get knocked down just make sure you land on your back because if you can look up you can get up 
Okay. Yeah, so even wild. if you're down, just look up. Cause if you can look up, you can get up and you will keep moving. So keep moving my people, keep moving. Hey man, hey man, that was good, man. That's, that was a uh, Les Brown that he was able. Eric Thomas got that from another great motivation yeah. speaker. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you're right, you're right, my boy yeah, Les yeah. Brown. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, man. So that's three down. Um, and y'all know what time it is, ladies and gentlemen. It is the bonus round. Bonus. That's right. So we're looking for a word from you guys. Um, we're excited just to kind of bring for your last word. I hope you guys have been blessed by what you've heard today um, by my brother and I uh, being led by the Holy Spirit, dealing with modes of transportation that God is going to deliver you, regardless if it's by air, regardless if it's by water or by mm -hmm. land. Um, oh, yeah. The deliverer, um, God, um, will make sure he see you through all the way. Amen. So this is our bonus round. And um, we're looking for a word from you guys. So go ahead in the chat. Go ahead and give us a word. What word do you want us to to breathe life as we are wrapping up uh, today's episode? Come on, Cletus. Bring it on, Cletus. And while we're waiting on that word, <laughs> y'all remember to share this content again. You can also follow us on YouTube at Need a Word. We'll post our YouTube link down here and also post the video from YouTube. So if you want to go ahead and subscribe, hit the subscribe button, share that word. And uh, remember, we're here on Sundays, 1130 a.m. every single Sunday. So invite a friend if you'd like, as well as Wednesdays, we send out a post. Um, we're using the Webster random words that come for the word of the day, Webster. And then we are breaking that down and sharing a word with you as well. And then throughout the week, you'll also receive some encouraging content. So stay locked in to need a word. The Lord is just getting started. Mm. All right. So there you have it. So. Here's what we're going to do. We go ahead and uh, we're going to uh, choose a word from our audience and uh, just see what the guy has for us on that, man. So here, here we go. So we have carrier, 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 carrier. Mm -hmm. um, so I go Where's ahead. And, from? What do you, it's from Tavares Butler, my brother there. Uh, Tavares Butler giving us the word uh, for our bonus round carrier. Um, mm. Again, just want to shout out to everyone who's been watching, who's been uh, putting your comments, sharing the broadcast. We appreciate you. Thank you. Um, but this is what uh, we love to do. We love to be used by the word of God because we are his carriers. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and jump off and start um, with right. that. Um, carriers, carriers, carriers. Uh, I, I believe um, that you and I are carriers of the word, the gospel, the good news. Um, carry just like they carry the newspaper. We are carrying the good news um, of the Lord. And I look at another mode of transportation, um, but this is, is by foot. So we talked about um, transportation through the air. We talked about transportation through the water. We talked about transportation on land, but now we're talking transportation on foot. Mm. Oftentimes you'll see the carrier walking to deliver um, the message, walking to deliver a package, walking to deliver something um, intended for someone else. And so if I can just pick up right there and to say is that uh, JD and I has been given the opportunity to be able to carry a word to someone else, mm -hmm. being able to deliver something that God has placed on the inside of us to someone else. For those of you that are watching, uh, we have been commissioned by God to deliver a word message to you. Mm -hmm. um, and so our word to you, again, is, is a word of upliftment. It's a word of encouragement. It's a word of do not give up. You are almost there. Do not give up. I know this year may not appear to be a good year, but do not give up. Mm -hmm. God is, 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 is giving us a message. You may have to look up like the blimp mm -hmm. or again, it can be something that's hand delivered like we're doing today and we're bringing it to your home <laughs> virtually. We're bringing mm -hmm. the word of God to you where you are. So you may be at home. Some people may be in the skies on the airplane. Some may be in a boat on a cruise ship. Mm -hmm. You may be far 
driving as you're hearing this or again you may be in your living room we're delivering you a word and god is meet you where you are regardless of where that place may be and so i'm grateful to be chosen as a carrier amen uh, a person who are or is, or is commissioned to deliver a word and again this is not of me this is of god so the message that we're giving to you just know it's addressed to you <laughs> the word yeah. of the day when we're talking about modes of transportation that's addressed to you. It has your name written all over it. And so I'm grateful for being an opportunity to be a carrier and uh, one who delivers um, the message of God. But that's what I have for that. All right. Awesome. Awesome. And one of the messages that we have for you, I'm going to build on that type, uh, is not only are we carriers of the word of God, but we are here to let you know that you are carriers of the work of God. Mm. You are you are commissioned to carry the work of God forth. And when we say the work of God, think about when I mentioned the people of Egypt crossing over or the, the, the people of Israel crossing over out of bondage, out of their tough situations, out of the thing that held them down and tortured them for many years into the promised land that God had provided them. How did their kids and their kids' kids, and their kids' kids know about that story. How do we still know about that story today? Because someone carried the work of God forward. So do not let this year go by in waste. And when we talk about some of the challenges that you had, yeah, you may have wished that you didn't go through some of them, but they made you stronger, and they gave you life lessons that you can carry to the next generation, that you can carry to someone else. So nothing is done in vain. So not only are you um, experiencing the word of, of God, but you are experiencing the work of God. And when you experience the work of God, it is great to praise him and to say, thank you, Lord, to acknowledge that he is the one who has done it. But the word also says that they overcame, they, mm. other people, we overcome by the word of our testimony by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So don't don't hold back your testimony. So for those who had nothing to think about, nothing to say on Thanksgiving, I want you to search your spirit and carry the work of God, something that he did for you this year, carry it to that table. Someone who has never been to church, someone who's not thinking about God, someone who might be resentful in their heart. I don't. You don't have to beat them over the head with the Bible. Just carry the work of God in your life over to them and the Lord will do the rest. So um, so please think about that as we get together in different aspects, whether it be virtually, but as these holidays, they give us a great opportunity to be able to share with one another the things that have happened throughout this year. So there's gonna be plenty of stories about the election. There's gonna be plenty of stories about the pandemic and COVID. There's gonna be plenty of stories about who I heard died and this would happen. What are you going to carry? What are you going to carry? So I want you to carry something unique to that table. And I want you to know that you are commissioned by God because if he did something for you in your life, he, he got you that new job or he made you uh, be able to sustain you throughout this time, which was absolutely um, just crazy. Um, you 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 have the responsibility and you should have it in your heart to want to carry something to say, man, let me tell you. But God did. So so that's what we're here to do is to continue to encourage you and encourage you personally, but also encourage you to understand that you are also carriers. So carrying by land, carrying by air, carrying by uh, by sea, carrying by foot and carrying by word, by mm. speech, by communication. Mm. We must carry the word of God for. Wow. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Um, we appreciate all of you guys that have tuned in today. I believe God was definitely speaking um, loud and clear. And I got the message loud and clear. I really hope you did as well. Yeah. And so uh, until next time, man, um, again, um, be sure to go ahead and, and like the page if you have not done so already. Uh, share the broadcast. Tag be those. a carrier. There you go. Be a carrier, right? Go be ahead. We're commissioning you to go ahead and carry this word forth um, as Jesus would um, as well. So we appreciate your time. Um, again, Ardeon Butler. J.D. August. Until we meet again next week, God bless you guys. Uh, pray for us as, as we pray for you. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, guys.
God bless. See you God next bless. time.